Hello everybody, today I'm going to share with you this iMac Mid 2007. Now this is actually the 24 inch version, I do have another 20 inch version as well, but this is the biggest that they had in mid 2007 all the way until early 2009 when this design was discontinued and in late 2009 when the new uh, 21 and a half inch and 27 inch iMacs were introduced. So this was the biggest iMac for 2007 to 2009 at the time and it has some pretty decent specs inside. I recently picked up this machine for five dollars as it had some problems with it. I found out that some of the capacitors on the power supply were bad. I went ahead and replaced those and voila! It works great now except for the display. The display seems to have some yellowing all over it. The whole screen is pretty much yellow but I'm guessing that's just from years of use. With some calibration tools I was able to bring it to a acceptable level of color for everything and it looks halfway decent actually. It also was overheating a lot once I got it working decided to blow it out and clean any vents inside and it works great now it doesn't overheat anymore so overall a pretty nice machine for five dollars it didn't come with any RAM. I currently have four gigabytes of DDR2 memory inside, which is the maximum that I believe Apple officially supports. However, you can put up to six gigabytes of RAM inside of the machine. But since I only had two two gigabyte modules sitting around, I might as well use what I have. Anyway, that's the RAM that is inside of this machine. For the processor, it has a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. And that was the built to already buy option. There was a built to order option. If you wanted to configure something, you could get the Intel Core 2 Extreme, which was a 2.8 gigahertz processor. And I believe that was quad core, I think. It might have been, may have just been dual core. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody can let us know in the comments down below. But anyway, this just has the standard 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo processor inside. Now, the memory here is only uh, 667 megahertz, so it's pretty, you know, not too fast, but that's okay. It seems to run absolutely fine. For graphics, we have the Intel HD 2600 Pro with 256 megabytes of video memory. Now, that's a pretty decent graphics card for this machine. Uh, it is 10 years old, and it seems to do just fine for everyday tasks. It originally would have came with a 320 gigabyte hard drive, but when I received this machine it didn't come with the hard drive. Thankfully they left the caddy inside or the pieces used to mount the hard drive. I just decided to put in a 250 gigabyte hard drive in its place since I don't need a lot of space on it and I just wanted to get the machine running. On the side over here we do have a super drive which is a nice addition and for an operating system we have 10.11.6 or El Capitan and that is actually the highest Mac OS that this machine can support. Well this older stuff wasn't really called Mac OS that's Sierra and onward but Mac <laughs> Mac OS 10 uh, 10.11.6 here is the highest that this machine can support. Now I have heard some users complaining that using anything higher than I believe 10.7 Lion or maybe uh, even higher like uh, Lion and onwards made this machine overheat. There was graphics card problems with the heat piping not working very well uh, with uh, taking the heat away from the graphics processor but I haven't seemed to have any problems with this machine here in particular. Anyway, there's a little idea of what this machine is. Now let's go ahead and take a look around. Starting on the top of the machine we will find our built-in microphone in addition to our 480p EyeSight camera. On the right hand side of the machine all we will find is our super drive. On the rear of the machine at the top we will find our ventilation for the three fans inside. In the bottom right hand corner of the back of the machine or if you are reaching around the front this would be the bottom left hand corner we will find our power button. Taking a look at the ports moving from left to right we have audio out, audio in, three USB 2.0 ports, one FireWire 400, one FireWire 800, Ethernet, and mini DVI out. 
Taking a look underneath the stand, or on the back of the machine here, we will find our power port, ventilation for one of the fans, and our Kensington lock port. On the bottom of the machine we will find our stereo speakers, in addition to ventilation for pulling in the air, and our RAM access door in the center. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Here we go. So before getting this thing to turn on, I had to try one million different RAM sticks. And apparently this very one it is happy with. So as I said, this machine I've had to replace capacitors on the power supply just enough for it to turn on. You can see there's problems with the screen. It's very yellow. We have these weird dashes on it. It's very messed up. That might be just be a problem with the capacitors because there probably are others that are going to go bad soon. So I need to probably go through and replace all of the capacitors that uh, appear to be anywhere near bad. And that would probably resolve some of this issue. But you'll see half the screen will flash and stuff as well. We can see the little ripples here going up and that's just the refresh rate of the screen not really agreeing with that of the camera. You can see the computer restarted because of a problem. That's okay. Go ahead and uh, ignore it because Apple can't really do anything about it. They don't care. This machine is 10 years old. Anyway, so now it only has two gigabytes of memory because that's the only thing it was happy enough to start up with. Whatever. So, anyway, like I said, this machine, it has had so many problems. It had a really rough life wherever it was used. And here it is. It's a miracle that it's even running today. But that's not to say that all of these 2007 24 inch iMacs have the same issues. It's just that this one in particular had a really, really hard life. So, let's go ahead and take a look at about this Mac. And we can see we're running El Capitan. It's the mid-2007. All the specs that I said before, except now we only have two gigabytes of memory because for some reason it was not happy with the other sticks of memory that I was using. And uh, apparently it's very happy with this one because it turned on. So I'll have to go through and see what the world is wrong with the RAM sticks that I used, or if this machine is just very, very picky. Do have some pretty nice graphics here for the time. That is nice. We can see the display. And we got our storage here. Of course, this machine would have originally came with a 320 or 360 gigabyte hard drive, something like that, I believe. But, um... I have a bunch of 250 gig hard drives lying around and that's why I installed that in this machine instead of a bigger one. And I don't really need the space for it, that's pretty much all the stuff I install anyway. And we can see the one empty slot, it's really happy with this one, so we'll let it be really happy with that one. Very weird, this machine has so many problems. But like I said, it'll run fine, it's just this machine in particular has had it pretty hard. So let's go ahead and take a look at Safari, which is still up to date, and it's the default browser here in El Capitan. It runs anything that I have tried on it just fine. Let's go ahead and go to one of the lighting sites here. And we're loading everything up here absolutely fine, even with two gigabytes of memory. Amazing. But yeah, it works just very well. Very well. We'll of course go to YouTube as well. Because that works just fine on this machine here. Not a problem. It will run HD content absolutely fine. I've tried it out on some different videos and looks like some of my friends have used it to watch other random things as well. But um, yeah, YouTube works just fine on this machine. 
when it doesn't throw up on me and restart all the time. Beautiful big screen. It's just as wide as a 21 and a half inch iMac of today, but it's just about mm, that much taller, I'd say. So you definitely get more screen real estate, and I'm guessing that uh, the 27 inch version, which I have used, I don't have one in my collection, but I have used the 27-inch uh, version before. I'm guessing it's equally as high as this 24-inch one, but just wider, of course. Anyway, back to the internet topic before I got sidetracked with this huge screen. Um, anything that you throw at this machine for internet-wise will run just fine. There's not a problem with it at all. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. It'll all run just fine. Of course, you can use Firefox, Chrome, or Opera. All of these browsers are up-to-date and fully supported here in El Capitan. Uh, Office 2016, or 2016, works on this machine. It is the minimum operating system required to run Office 2016. However, here I have Office 2011 installed, and I do like this version a lot better because you only pay for the key once, and you don't have to pay like every month or year, like 2016. Here you pay for it once, and you're done forever. So that's really nice. Let's go ahead and open up Word here. For all I know, this could be the first time opening Word on this machine, and it looks like it is. So, of course, the first time opening Word, it's going to take a little bit. It's going to find the fonts and things like that. But every time after the first ever run of the Office uh, product here, it'll run a lot faster. So it looks like it found all the fonts that it was looking for for the first time. And we get our different choices. We can go ahead and hit Choose. And there we go. Now with this big screen, we can definitely zoom in on this document. I mean, you can make this thing huge. Go ahead, I'm sure you can work on documents side by side without a problem. Beautiful. So, we'll go ahead and quit Word. Of course, Excel works just fine here as well. And all these other applications I have used on this machine without any problems, other than the RAM sticks being a problem. But that's not a problem with the operating system and applications themselves. That's a problem with the apparently bad RAM that I have. But all of these applications work just fine on this machine. I've used Photoshop on here, uh, Minecraft. I haven't had a chance to do Final Cut uh, Pro 10, but it, it did install on this machine absolutely fine for me. And I do believe it's somewhat supported. I don't know. But it installed fine, so I don't use it too often. Sometimes when I want to use something different, but I like, uh, I well, apparently I don't have the newer version of iMovie on here. This is iMovie from iLife 11, but uh, yeah, all of this works just fine on this machine. Even though this machine has a lot of problems, I know I'll be able to fix all of them. I mean, I got it working this this good. I, when I received it, it was absolutely dead. Dead. I mean dead. And a little bit further, and I can definitely bring it back to full, perfect functionality. But anyway, this machine is fantastic. I really love the screen real estate it has, the power it has for being 10 years old. I mean, wow. It's a great, great machine. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this quick little video, well, maybe it wasn't so quick, review of the iMac 24-inch mid-2007 in 2017. It works great, and I would recommend it. N not one of these that have, uh, you know, had a, a, a really hard life, but unless, unless you want, you know, one with a broken and you fix it right up, not a problem at all. But, great machine. It really is. Go ahead and shut it down now and I'll start ra stop rambling. I need to stop doing that. But once again, I really do hope you enjoyed 
this video and also please comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.